Here we are at the AEA booth, and I'm excited to say that they have a new microphone, and I'm here with Wes Dooley, and he's just about to tell me about it. The cool thing is, right before we started, you said that you need to have it facing this way to get kind of the rejection, right? Right. Well, we're right by, across from a DJ outfit, and so they get noisy. So a ribbon microphone is, is intrinsically, in this case with big ribbons down to 20 hertz, a bi-directional mic, which means it has a plane of rejection instead of a point of rejection like the combination a cardioid, which is a combination of a figure eight and an omni. You get a point of silence in the back. With these, you get a plane of silence. So I just orient the plane of silence so that it is towards the speakers over at the DJ booth. Wonderful. Now, this microphone is called the N22, it's the Nuvo. The Nuvo, I like well, that. Well, we, we really have been working for a while on a new series of mics, and this is the first of the series. And so it's the N22. It was a tribute to the people like um, Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem, who let me record for my uh, college radio show, and a lot of other people who played music, Lightning Hopkins, Matt Slipscomb, uh, Gene Ritchie, Gene Redpath, who did acoustic music, which was my first love. And luckily, of course, I at some point got introduced to the LA uh, Philharmonic, the Philadelphia Orchestra, because Ron Stryker, that I've worked with a lot, he's really a orchestra guy. And um, so I've gotten a real range of stuff, but I got back to my first love, which is acoustical music, and things that people do for themselves. Music that they would make whether there was a commercial market or not. And we looked at what we could do that would really fit that. And I worked with a very good uh, group of people who had a lot of experience and aimed me at things like, okay, what happens in this era is people buy 500 or $1,000 worth of recording gear. And these people oftentimes have been musicians for years, have a lot more in the way of instruments, both in number of instruments and money into them. And they play with friends and they play, yeah, they, they play some paid gigs, but this is probably not their primary income. And what they rapidly learn once they buy these very lovely, easy to use, uh, 96 kilohertz, 24-bit systems, some of those are excellent. They learn that it doesn't sound when they record with a uh, typical mic they would buy for $100 as part of this $500 thing. It doesn't sound like the instrument. And at some point, they hear it on their recordings on good speakers and they go, no, nope, it doesn't work. And it's not that the microphones they're using are, are bad, they're inexpensive and sturdy, and they're really useful. But RCA did this tradition in the 30s of designing things that sounded like the music. And they ignored the metrics, the real work of anechoic chambers until it mattered to get consistency. So what they would do is they would listen to their mics they were doing on oh, piano, voice, guitar, flute. When it did pretty well with that, they'd take the hour's ride up from Princeton Junction in the labs to the Symphony of the Air. And they would put it up and they'd listen to it on the food groups from vocals and uh, choruses to percussion brass, strings, woodwinds. And when you walk back and forth between the studio and the playback, well actually it wasn't even playback, it was just direct because we're talking broadcast here, and they would hear it on the speakers and it sounded consistent between the two, well now you had a microphone worth measuring. And we tackled this one, we have some, a number of guys who play and who are engineers at AEA, and we just went, we'll work on it till it sounds really good and everybody likes it, and then we'll find out what we did from measurement standpoint so we can make them consistent. 
because there's no point anybody should ever spend more money unless they get something that one sounds good on as wide a variety of things as possible and two is consistent so if you buy another one and make a pair it sounds like stereo and does a great job on it. Well now you've got my ears smiling and I'm dying to hear this thing. Before I do I just want to describe that I love the design. It's just it's easy it's a kind of a brush steel look. Yeah this is actually a nickel finish because nickel finish, we, we like nickel because it's really easy on the environment. Although it's pretty tricky to get the weight down to the where we wanted, we had to make it out of aluminum. But doing it out of aluminum, we could keep the weight under a pound so that any mic stand you put it on, it probably wouldn't fall over on a boom. And that's really important because we know from the mics we work with from the 32 that RCA did and 35 that uh, Bloomline did for EMI that are at places like Abbey Road and in use every day, that if you take care of them, it's like my Double Odd 18 from 1964. It's a perfectly nice guitar, and my son has it now and says, well, you don't get it back much, Dad. <laughs> That's good. So this is a microphone that you can buy, take care of, and pass it on. And I'll tell you, i got to try it now because I'm just dying. Uh, I will turn off this microphone for the guys out there that are going, wait, he's using a wireless. I'm going to turn this one off when I'm editing it, and I'm going to go to this guy. He's going to take it away from me. And then uh, last question that That's I have. A wireless mic. It's I know. Much easier than wiring things. Like <laughs> that one. Well, let me ask you this. How much is this going to sell for? Well, we started shipping them at the end of October, and they sell street in the U.S. for $8.99. And we really worked our ass off to do that. I have a friend who is one of the founders with Phil uh, Dutteridge, a focus right, who still works for Soundcraft, the company they started. He designs, uh, he's in charge of design for consoles, for Studer, for Soundcraft, and he's an organist, a uh, member of the Royal Guild of Organists, has a studio out in Wanage, and he owns all our mics and uses them. And he said, a few years ago when I started this design, he said, Wes, I have your mics because they're the best mics in the world in many ways. They're just right up there with everything that can be done. But I'll say that you've never learned to do really cost-effective microphone design. So knowing that when I did this mic, he might say, well, it's nice, but... I had the 3D drafting on one big screen and I had a spreadsheet on the other as I go through three different different ways you could do it, trying to figure out what was most, would give us the 100 year lifespan plus that we design into our mics because we treat them as instruments. And at the same time would give the performance where they sound good on everything and glorious on many things and that you could use it in a small space with M-Audio and other preamps that are good, but not the really expensive stuff. I love it, well here we go you guys. I'm gonna do a song that I wrote for my, uh, well, soon to be wife, but now she's with me and I've been married now many years. And well, so I might as well uh, sing. Obviously a good song. <laughs> I hope so, so. Sing from the front here. Here we go. Close your eyes, start to dream Though your heart may never see A girl as beautiful as you are Everywhere that I know Still I'll never go <laughs> I, I switched around that lyric A girl as beautiful as you are People stop and they stare but it's not the clothes you wear Your smile turns a gray sky blue So I hope and I pray That I'll stand in front of you And hear you whisper these three words I love you Close your eyes, start to dream Though your heart may never see A girl as beautiful as you are <laughs> 
That sounds fantastic. It sounds, you know, like the old, you know, crooning and the warmness and just, ah, oh, Well, lush. this uses the same big ribbon. Oh, here we go, yeah. I can use this. This uses the same big ribbon as the 44s, the ones that they had on the front edge of the Ryman Auditorium when Dolly Parton came to town and she first sang into. That people like Bing Crosby are at the other end. Um, Elvis Presley, our Brian Wilson would use. And these were great vocal mics. Now there's no one vocal mic that does everything for everybody for every mix. There is, you know, that's just, vocals are the hardest thing in the world, but these have done more things than most people ever imagined. And by using the same ribbon material with the same 16 and a half hertz tuning, we, we've been able to get that really smooth sound that doesn't grate on you, that really, that women like to have just whispered in their ear. I like that, the sound that women like to have whispered in their ear. Well, you can check it out at your website. It's www.ribbonmics.com. Well, he makes it simple. Thank you so much, Wes Dooley, and thanks for making a great product. Thank you very much, Johnny. Take care.